So I ran to this girl the other day, and the entire conversation was based around the fact she's going to be alone on Valentine's Day. Is that a legitimate flirting strategy? Could you consider that flirting? Where exactly did you meet this girl? At the grocery store? Hmm. Where exactly? The Kmart on Gilmore. No, no, no. I mean, where exactly in the grocery store? I fail to see why that matters. Well, there are two distinct different scenarios here. For example, if you meet a girl in, say, like the dairy section, she's gonna have much higher standards than a girl in the cereal aisle. I mean, right, Thomas? It's just science. Ah, who am I kidding? You haven't had a date in, like, forever. It hasn't been forever. Oh, yeah? When was the last time you had a date? Exactly. Listen to me, Ben. I know this stuff. So what qualifies you as a dating scientist? I don't know. Maybe the fact that I've had two dates in the past week. Two dates, huh? That's a pro, man. You're not kidding. So how does two dates in one week qualify you as a dating scientist? <sighs> ben, look. It's the season of Valentine's Day. Nobody's really looking for love. Everybody's looking to see how many dates they can rack up in one week. And so far, in that one week, I've gotten two. Love is exactly what people want during the season of Valentine's Day. Look, love or not, Cupid's flying around, shooting his little heart-shaped arrows. I've caught on two of his shots and connected both times. And? And what? What about those dates? Did you get follow-up dates? Doesn't matter. The way I see it, you're passing up a perfectly good opportunity. This girl told you she was going to be alone on Valentine's Day. The door is wide open. I'm not chasing this. Chasing what? This date. Why not? Because it was super weird. What? What makes it super weird? The only thing said were, excuse me, I'm going to be alone on Valentine's Day. Really? Well, maybe that wasn't quite it, but you get the point. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it feels like all I'm hearing about are the lives of some weird lonely people. And last time I checked, this is a restaurant, not happy hour at Applebee's. Usually, when your boss says a line like that, you leave the pantry in question and you get back to work. Regardless of what he has to say, I want you both to remember I had two dates last week. Cody, congratulations. Two dates. You win. You know what you win? A relational headache when they both find out about each other. And in case any of you are wondering, I will be here doing my job, which is making sure you all get paid for doing your jobs poorly. I guess the science of the season doesn't account for triangles. Ben, don't make math jokes. My brain hurts enough for my own dating struggle. You're what? Yeah, I, I meant to tell you earlier, but then science. Dang it, Thomas. I'm leaving town for the weekend. Who's going to keep you from freaking out while I'm gone? Certainly not Bill Nye over there, that's for sure. All right, just tell me about it on Monday, OK? See you later. Bye. So you got a date? Yes. Awesome. When is it? Friday. Go away. Ah, Friday. Sweet. Need some advice? You got a formula for the days of the week? Dude, enough with the science jokes. All right? I want to help set you up for success on this date. You seem oddly sincere. Shocking, right? Look, I know how hard it might be to navigate the dating scene, especially when you haven't been in it for a while. And I'd like to help you out. And Valentine's Day has very high expectations. Yeah, 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 I get it. So, what do I need to know? All right, first off, where are you taking her? Harmony's on six. How do you back that up? What do you mean, back it up? Well, you see, my friend, that's a pretty swanky place. And swanky, you are not. Thanks. You need to spice it up a bit. You know, puff up your profile. Stack the deck. You want me to lie to her? Mm-hmm. Why would I do that? To impress her. Duh. Seriously, look at it this way. All right, all you gotta do is uh, sprinkle yourself with a little bit of mystery and intrigue, just like James Bond, and she's all yours. 
What happens when she finds out that I'm Rosnan instead of Connery? You make sure she never has to. Seriously, though, you need to prepare for this date. You have to come up with plenty of responses by yourself if she's going to ask about you. They all do. Actually, Cody, that last part isn't too bad. I know. And a lot like this soup, you need some seasoning. Unless you want her to send you back to the kitchen, you need to season yourself up. Be yourself. Okay, what about me? Maybe Cody was right. For once. I'm gonna need stuff to talk about the whole time. The drive, at dinner, after dinner, at her house. This is crazy. My car, that's, that's cool and stuff. What other fictional stories can I come up with about myself? I used to be a lion tamer. No, shark tamer? That's... that's not a thing. Tornado chaser? I should at least try to make it a bit believable. The car thing's good. How about... Studied abroad. Met lots of European girls. Cause... That'll make it look like I know what in the heck I'm doing. Cause God knows I don't. This could be the absolute best or worst idea I've ever had. But it's worth a shot, isn't it? Probably shouldn't let her know that I talk to myself.
Sorry I'm late. I got caught up doing my hair. So do you like my car? It's new. Yeah, it's nice. The Volkswagen Rabbit is actually the same car as the GTI. It's just the American version. Like, it wasn't made in America, but any that were shipped to America between before 1985 or between 2006 and 2009 were named Rabbit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Any European versions were named either GTI or Golf, which is debated on whether it's the Gulf of Mexico or the actual sport of golf. Very interesting history. So this one's new? That makes it a GTI, right? No. This is a rabbit. It says it right on the back of the car. But I thought you said this was new. New to me. It's a 2007, which puts it right in the middle of the second round of American Volkswagen rabbits. Does it run on carrots instead of gas? Nope, just unleaded. Harmonies? What happened to table seven? Well, I figured this is a much better suit for our date. And besides, this place is much better than Table 7. Well, table Seven's my favorite. Oh, uh, I didn't know. And besides, I figured you'd enjoy a treat for me for Valentine's Day. It's not even Valentine's Day. So I'm surprised you let me order for myself, considering how you wanted to treat me tonight. Yeah, I figured you're a beautiful grown woman. You're perfectly capable of ordering for yourself. Wow, yeah, I'm capable, thanks. What was that? <laughs> I, I just, I asked, uh, so what do you do? Ah, uh, I'm, I'm a chef. A chef? Wait, this isn't your restaurant, is it? Is that why it's your favorite? Oh, no, no, no. It's not proper of a chef to consider his own restaurant his favorite. Well, yes, I'm my, chef, my favorite chef. This is my favorite restaurant, for lots of other reasons. Atmosphere, waiters. This place does a lot better at those things. Of course, those aspects are out of my control. So, where do you work? Which restaurant? Oh, it's, um, some place on the other side of town. Where? <laughs> um, hey, look, here comes our appetizer. Thanks. Wow, this looks incredible. What is it? Oh no, don't be scared of it. It's just center cut steak, shaved very thin, seasoned, grilled just past rare, then rolled and skewered. The seasoning is most likely a standard salt and pepper, along with a spicy ginger. And that would pair nicely with the soy sauce located on the side of our plate. Mm. Wow, this is delicious. And might I say, I was spot on with my description. When you have a chef's palate like mine, you tend to be able to see these things before you taste them. Is that right? You know, I learned a lot about this type of cuisine while I was studying abroad. Oh, really? Where did you study? The wide and mysterious Orient. Thailand, to be more specific. You studied the cuisine in Thailand? What university did you go to? Oh, it, uh, it wasn't for a university. Then what exactly made it a studying program? Well, I, I did study. I studied eh, the food, the people. It was a worldly cultural experience unlike any other. But it wasn't a real studying program? 
Not per se, no. Right. Yeah, I met so many fascinating people while I was over there. So many beautiful girls. Oh, really? Yeah, but none of them quite as beautiful as you. Oh, thanks. I'm flattered. Oh, you're quite welcome. It was strange to sing, though. I just couldn't keep them off of me. <clears throat> so, how's your dinner? Incredible. But not quite as good as theirs. I used to have in Italy. Oh, did you study there as well? <laughs> of course not. It was an extended family vacation. Who has time for two world study programs? Well, not real programs, though. Oh, this is just perfect. Just be patient, my lady. I'll have this door open in two shakes. You know, you probably could have unlocked your own door and used the inside button by now. Well, that would take away my opportunity to be the man now, wouldn't it? Ah, there we are. Opening the door makes you a man? Well, you better tell everyone else because they seem to be convinced it's something else. It's a bit chilly out there, isn't it? So I was thinking that now we could go to one of my favorite places. And, you know, just sit in the car, talk. You know, Thomas, I think it would be a better idea if you just took me home. Oh, no, I didn't mean. I just, I wanted to show you something special. Nope, no. <laughs> I just, I have these stories that I want you t to tell you about me. And they all directly relate to, this, to the train station down on first. Thomas, I didn't. I have a headache, and you ruined the surprise now anyway, so let's just go back to my house. Oh, thank God. I thought maybe you thought... Anyway, yeah, let's go to your place. Thanks for the date, Thomas. It was my pleasure, darling. Well, Thomas, it's been nice, but I really should be getting to bed. I've got a big day tomorrow, a lot of stuff to do. Oh, come on. What could be so important that you have to go to bed at... 9 o'clock tonight? Especially after a magnificent date with me. <laughs> yeah, it was magnificent, all right. What was that? I said it was magnificent. <laughs> I know, right? Magnificently deserving of a punch in the face. What? I I don't understand. What? I take you out on a wonderful date, and this is how you return the favor? Return the... Do you even hear yourself? Do you hear yourself? Thomas, just shut up! You really think you took me on a nice date? Really? What do you even know about me? I know... I... Exactly. I know you're rude and ungrateful when a nice guy takes you out. How would you know? A nice guy didn't take me out. I went out with some insufferable spitwad with a huge ego. I... Did you just call me a spitwad? Thomas, just leave! You're supposed to come in through the back, right? 
no open parking back there. Really? The kitchen must be full today. Anyway, how was your date on Friday? Bad. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Well, I was a jerk. Oh, That's not possible. It is. In what world are you a jerk? The one where nature's a lonely old cat lady who wants to make you a loser just like her, so girls don't think you're cool. In other words, this one. Who told you that? The girl? Emily. Her, her name's Emily. And no, she didn't say that. I just... I didn't think that boring, lonely, dateless, it sad... Was Cody, wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> you know better than that! I know. What did he tell you? He told me to make up stuff about myself so I'd seem cooler to her. What? I mean, it was, really I just did some research and embellished on stuff that was already mostly true. So in your mind, you were educated in sharing, but in reality, you were just a made-up version of you who really loves himself? Yeah. Alright, just focus on the dishes and listen to me. You were an idiot to listen to Cody. He's literally just the worst kind of person. Dude, he might hear you. He's not even here. He's probably on another date. Just listen, what other choice did you have? You were desperate, and I wasn't here to give you any real advice. Dude, don't make this about you. And I wasn't desperate. Right. Anyway, Cody was just playing a trick on me, and you took it a little too far, which you've been known to do. But you're not boring. You're one of the cooler guys I know, and honestly, I feel like you're one of the better listeners of anybody. And that's what gets you props on first date. So the internet was right. Google dating advice? Yeah. And you chose Cody's advice. Wow. He must have really sold it to you. There it is. So now what do I do? Well, what do you mean? I mean, I know I should have just bed myself and listened and all that good stuff, but I screwed it up and now she's gone forever. Let's say forever. You really liked her, didn't you? I mean, as much as you can like someone after one date without seeming like a murderous stalker. So, there's that. Well, I mean, I guess that's healthy. Oh, dude, I gotta take this. Best boyfriend broke up with her, and she's been like really unstable and she's staying at my house. Crazy sister, your house? Better make sure she doesn't burn all your clothes because she resents the existence of men. Yes, Beth? Yes. No, I already gave you all the blankets. There are no more. I promise. What? Good God, Beth. There are extra rolls under the sink. In the bathroom? Wait, what? Oh, oh. Yeah, I'll tell him. Alright, no, Beth, it's not funny. Alright? Okay, okay, bye. What's wrong? This girl's name's Evelyn? At least your Facebook friends. You don't have to be friends with somebody to tag him in a post. I'm gonna go. Dude, don't. Tell Crenshaw I threw open the soup. He didn't throw open that soup, did he? No, the soup's fine.
<laughs> Emily, it's... This is Emily. I can't answer the phone at the moment. Most likely because I'm saving the world. But if what you have to say is more important than that, feel free to leave a message. Uh, Emily, it's... It's Thomas. I was hoping to catch the real you and not the voicemail you, but... I guess this is better anyways. You probably just would have yelled at me anyways and hung up on me before I could say anything. So, I guess I'm calling just to say I'm sorry. Like, really sorry. The guy you went out on a date with and the guy you made that Facebook post about, that wasn't me. I just really wanted to impress you and I thought if I made stuff up about myself, you know, stack the deck or whatever. So anyway, I screwed up, and you know that. But I just wanted to let you know how bad. Maybe one day I'll see you around and you'll think, hey, there's that weird Thomas guy who made stuff up about himself to impress me and was, and was a total jerk. And I'll smile or something and you'll, you'll think, he apologized, but he's still super weird for doing that. And then you'll think about how I explained this whole entire scenario to you as a part of that apology. And you'll run far, far away. So there's that. I guess you got to experience the real me after all. Oh, man, I am so freaking weird. What am I doing? Wow, this is incredible. I told myself I wouldn't let her know that I talked to myself. And now I'm talking to myself about it. Surprise! <laughs> what in the world is this? This is happy not gonna be sad today, day. Is that nationally recognized or just by the restaurant? Oh, not even by the restaurant. I had to work pretty hard to get this allowed. All right, you had your fun. Clean it up. Well, thanks anyway. I appreciate the effort. No problem. Just promise me you'll have a good service tonight. I plan on cooking up a storm. In just a few minutes, you have your food order. Thank you very much. Hi there, my name's Ben. Um, are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Because you seem a bit upset. And uh, if there was anybody around here, just let me know and I'll lay the smack down on them. Yeah, wasn't a server, it's fine. All right, well, if you need anything, just let me know. I'm the head server around here, so I pull some weight, and I can get you anything you need. Just, uh, just as long as it's legal. Do you know why some dates are just bad? Uh, that seems to be an age-old question. And uh, honestly, I don't have an answer for that. Um, it's probably because I don't go on a whole lot of dates myself, but I would say it's probably because we always try to be somebody that we're not. Are you sure it's not a server around here, though? It's not this. Low hanging fruit. Yeah, it's still not a server. Actually, the guy in question isn't here, and he was supposed to be about an hour ago. Hmm. Well, first off, props to you for hanging out that long. Um, you have more patience than most, trust me. Um, but I honestly don't know what to say. I mean. This stings a little bit, but at least you have a clean slate to bounce back from. Maybe. It's just, this is the second bad date I've been on this week. I just don't understand why guys, sorry, are so mean. Well, it seems to me like the real problem is the guy from the other night. Yeah, that would seem that way. The guy I was supposed to meet tonight was really just to try to get over the guy from the other night, but he seems to be just the same. Maybe it's just me. No, I don't think it's you. I haven't been here for more than five minutes and I haven't been a jerk to you. So, tell me what happened the other night. 
Well, he was so nice and sweet when I first met him. I went to the coffee shop to meet one of my friends and he came up to get his coffee and just said hi. And then they got his order wrong and he had all the patients in the world with them and so we just started talking and he said some funny stuff and he was cute and patient and I guess those things were enough for me to give him my number. Well, he sounds perfect. Yeah, he set himself up perfectly. He called me the next night and set up the whole date and everything and he did everything exactly how I wanted it. And then? Well, then the date came and he was the biggest jerk I ever met. He talked about himself all night, about all he had done, where he had been, all of his past girlfriends, and he talked about his car, even though it was obvious I didn't care. And he made me feel like he was the only one allowed to decide anything, or say anything, or talk, or laugh, or anything. I felt so belittled by the end of the night, I finally lost it and forced him to leave. Wow, that uh, sounds really bad. But what do you think was the difference between the two times that you met him? I have no idea. It's just so confusing. He called me last night and left a voicemail apologizing, and he sounded so sincere. He even made up this weird future scenario about us meeting, and then he talked to himself, and... But he just sounded so sincere and sad, and for the dumbest reason, I actually believe him, and I feel bad for him, and... I don't know, the whole him talking to himself is actually kind of cute, and... I don't know, he sounded like he did the first time I met him. I don't know, it's just hard to explain. I think I can try. You see, guys are silly creatures. We really are. I am, and I know this guy is too. And when we meet girls that we really like, we tend to do things that usually make us end up looking like idiots. And the number one technique is unsuccessfully attempting to impress a girl. And I think that's what we have here. This guy really liked you. And he wanted you to think he was half as cool as he thought you were. And so he made some stuff up to seem that way. Don't you guys ever think that eventually we'll find out? Well, I never really think that far ahead. Like, ever. I just don't get it. I mean, why? Well, regardless, I wish I could just tell him that I'm sorry I yelled at him and that I accept his apology, but I just don't have the guts to call him. Well, if you have the guts to stick around here just a little longer, I just may know where you can find the guy from the other night. He may or may not be here, but I can't know for sure. So hey, order your dinner. It's on me, so enjoy it. And just hang out. I'll let the server know that you'll be here so they won't, like, kick you out or anything. And after my shift, I'll come back and I'll give you the information you so desire. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds perfect. Yeah? Yeah. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Hey man, you're out there for a while. Like, abnormally long. Yeah, you know, just serving the good people with warm food and kind words. <laughs> Counselor Ben reappears, does he? Sure does. You're too good for this place, you know. <laughs> nah, you need me here. You don't expect me to wash those, are you? No, not at all. Prep can get them in the morning. That's good. I don't want to stay here any longer than I have to. Emily, I, um... No, Thomas, you don't have to. I think I get it. You think? Yeah, I talked to Ben. He kind of let me in on the whole act like a fool to impress kind of thing. I mean, I think it's really stupid, but I get it. Yeah, it's really, really stupid. And I don't know why I did it. And I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry too. I got mad and yelled and that wasn't nice. Well, I deserved it. You can yell me some more if you want. I just... I wish we could do the first date over again. Well, the sad and sucky part is that we can't redo the first first date. Yeah. But... What? We can have our second first date. This time with the real Thomas, not made-up Thomas. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of fake Thomas either. He's a real jerk. Yeah. Try dating it. You know, I listened to your voicemail like 10 times last night. 
Oh no. No, it's adorable. What? Yeah. Slightly weird guys that talk to themselves are pretty attractive. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I'm serious. You know, my last boyfriend. When you're studying abroad? No, I'm not that interesting. So tell me about this last boyfriend. I really wasn't gonna say anything. I was just gonna make fun of you. <laughs> is that how this is gonna be? You can search my heart All you'll find is you Without your love I don't know what I do Cause you are my muse And I'm just a wayfair lover And my heart knows no better is gone brighter now that you're around it's darker your love is gone it's brighter now that you're